This broadcast is brought to you by Shell and Malta Carib. Someone once said, look to the east for the coming of a black king. While nestled here in the quiet community of Trin City is one of our eastern powerhouses, kings in their own rights, who entered the Premier Division back in 2017 with no intentions of being relegated anytime soon. After losing away, can they defend at home against the boys from a tiny fishing village in Tobago? Traveling some 52 miles by air, with no intentions of making the trip back tonight without the spoils of victory. It's match day five of the SSFL Premiership and today Trinity College East is at home to Speyside High in a clash where the winner can move to mid-table. It's a hot but breezy Saturday afternoon here in Trinidad and Tobago. We are live on CNC3, Sportsmax and Scene TV. My name is Hans Devines. Before we go any further, let's take a look at today's weather forecast. Temperature at 33 degrees Celsius, humidity at 57% and indeed is actually partly cloudy. Sarala joins me on the pitch. That's right. Our thanks, Hans. Well, both teams today could do with a confidence boost, uh, having experienced disappointments in their last two matches. Of course, our Trinity College East having succumbed to St. Anthony's mm -hmm. and then Space Side High having experienced the effects of Tropical Storm Karen. Well, the only threat we want to talk about is the threat on the pitch since Tropical Storm Karen has been downgraded. Now, some of the matches that we are looking forward to today is that match Karpachima East against Mali. Secondary, a very, very exciting match ahead of us there. QRC, they are home to Sour North Secondary. And St. Mary's College would like to get some goals past the team that is coached by their former assistant coach, St. Augustine Secondary School. The Hawks have their eyes on Space Eye today. That's right. Now, 120 goals have been scored for the season thus far, nine of which we've seen here on Sports Max, Scene TV, and CNC3. Of course, today we hope to see a few more goals and some top quality football. In the meantime, uh, let's take a look. Here's a roundup of the last five rounds. We started off a bit shaky, but here we are, right back on solid ground. The Secondary Schools Football League is well underway, and when we look back at past seasons, the quality of play on the field is not what we expected to see. But in a league this fluid, where students change almost every year, many teams are in the transitional phase, having lost many of their key players. Some teams, up to 13 players from last season, have moved on. And while this may affect some teams more than the others, it has not changed the dominance of two of the stronger teams in the league. Setting pretty at the top of the table are Naprima College and Presentation College. Both teams with robust developmental programs and both teams with the passion, motivation and heritage of winning. Also making their mark at the top this season is St. Anthony's College. We've seen what St. Anthony's can do in the past league installments of the SSFL, sometimes scoring up to 44 goals. And this season, they're showing us that history may repeat itself yet again. Newcomers to the Premiership, Malik Secondary, started off with a bang. But the SSFL seems to be getting the better of them now, and they dropped points in their last two games. We still can't rule them out, though. And now to tackle the second half of the table, we encountered two schools in the throes of change, propping up the bottom of the table. St. Augustine Secondary and St. Mary's College. St. Augustine is the only team that has not won a match, and St. Mary's has lost the most matches. However, in the case of St. Mary's, who registered their first win against Malik Secondary, maybe five wrongs was just what they needed to get their foot in. So who's hot? Harpy Chimer Secondary with two wins and two draws to their name, 
Caps was successful against Presentation College on their first outing this Premiership season, beating them by two goals to one. Their season is off to a fantastic start. And who is not? St. Augustine's secondary. With zero wins to their name, it's proving to be the artist of the season. With three draws and one loss. After five wrongs, it's time to convert some of those draws into wins. In today's game, Speyside High School makes their way to Trin City to face Trinity College East. Speyside High had their last match against QRC Council due to the effects of Tropical Storm Karen. But they're here today to try to turn their luck around and register a win against the Blue Hawks, who after losing their last match to St. Anthony's College, don't want to go down at home. Today's match may hold some surprises for us, but until then, we await the referee's whistle. Pay attention to those predictions because most times they are rent. <laughs> they are completely right. Brent Sancho joins me on the pitch. Brent, let's get into it. Speyside High School. We know usually the Tobago teams struggle in the secondary schools football league premiership. How is Speyside faring this time around? Well, first of all, Speyside High School already have double the points of last year's Tobago's representative, Bishop High School. They have done well so far in terms of the way they have approached games. They come into this game, of course, not losing in the last two games, one of them being a victory over the very fancied San Juan North. They had one of their games, of course, postponed, so of course that would have some sort of effect. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of confidence in this Speyside High School's camp. How do you think having that rest day from last match day will affect them today? Well, first and foremost, the coach would have had the ability to start working on things as, as he builds towards this season. Already we are seeing some sort of revival of sorts for the space side team, of course, losing their first game, coming into this one high on confidence. Yeah, well, not so high on confidence from their last game being <laughs> a 3 0 loss to St. Anthony's College, Trinity College East. What do they need to do today? Well, first and foremost, they have to defend their set plays. Against St. Anthony's College, they allowed two goals to come in. One, of course, being a tremendous free kick from Young Thomas of St. Anthony's College and a throw in into the box. They struggled all game against St. Anthony's College with balls coming into the box. They have to be brave and defend better. Mm -hmm. They also have to score their opportunities. Yeah. Williams and co, of course, Young Wiley, a tremendous talent. He has to put the ball in the back of the net. It's all good to have the good industry but you need an end product. And that is one thing the coach also spoke, spoke about, finishing. Now, when we talk about today and the weather conditions, it's very humid day. I mean, you get some breeze in between. How do you think it's going to affect the young men today? Well, you're correct. It's a very, very hot day here today. And we talked about the struggles, particularly with the Tobago teams traveling from so far. The heat and humidity will have a factor as it relates to their fitness, how they get on with this game. Trinity is, of course, at home. They're going to want to use this for, as it, their advantage. Mm -hmm. Of course, hydration is the key word for today. All right, Brent, any predictions for today? Because we spoke about 120 <laughs> goals scored so far for the season, but so far on camera, on TV, we only saw nine. What are your predictions for goals today? Well, if Trinity College East can create the amount of chances that they did against St. Anthony's College and, of course, execute on those chances, I think we'll be in for a good day of goal scoring here on the SSFL. All right, well, we'll be back and we find out what happens when the Hawks take on Speyside at their home ground. But let's take a look at one of the players that may actually make a difference in today's game, Romario Mahabir. This player profile is brought to you by Shell. My name is Khalil Oliver. I...
Welcome back to it. Getting ready for SSFL action. Manager Colette uh, here with me on a home ground. That must feel good. Yes, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Manager Colette, uh, you all conceded three goals uh, last match, of course, to St. Anthony's. Uh, two because of set plays. Are you concerned about it at all going into today's match? Yeah, well, um, set plays are always a concern for us at the secondary school level and, a, and for national level players. Mm -hmm. um, so, we would have worked on that and... It's something that we'll hope that to improve today. All right, excellent. I know there was talk about finishing as well. Um, is that something that you all would have worked on? Yeah, the, um, the guys would have had a chance to reflect and rest and train and work on that yesterday. So hopefully we'll be at real better today. Excellent. Thank you very much, Manager Collett. Joined right now by Akil from Trinity East. He was here with us last time around. Akil, last year, I mean, not such a bad season for the team, but how does this school and how do you as a student feel about the team this year? We are confident in them and we have faith that with the upcoming games, they can at least secure us a place in the top three. In the top three? Woo! Amen High. Now, speaking of Amen High, what do you have to say for Speyside High? Look out for Terrell O'Reilly. Goals. Goals? Just goals. Well, we're looking forward to some goals today. But let's talk about one of the players that actually left the school because I know you all lost seven players this year, seven of the starters. So let's talk a little bit about it. Well, Khalil Alvar to me is a very talented keeper and being Malik's current keeper and our former keeper, Malik who we face on Monday, he's a keeper to look out for and here's his player profile. This player profile is brought to you by Shell. My name is Khalil Oliver. I am 17 years of age. I live in and I'm the goalkeeper for Trinity Colleges. My biggest motivation is my dad. He go all out for me. When I have to get to practice, he wake me up. You know, he drop me, he come back for me. He make sure I'm always prepared. Well, I got into football from my father. He played football and cricket, but I think he was more into football, so I take up that sport. Well, I start off with Memphis, and then I went to Semipro and Blas through coach Chippy and Andy. So yeah, I started playing football. My biggest accomplishment was playing for the National Under-17 in the CONCACAF World Cup Under-17 qualifiers in Burnton, Florida. Well, that experience was pretty challenging, you know, stepping on the field, when on the red, white and black. I was able to deliver 110% on the field and give my all for the country and for me and my family. Uh, my favourite goalkeeper is David here and my favourite club is Manchester United, so I watch him as well. And his positioning is very good, so I think he is one of my idols as a goalkeeper. I plan to impact the game and well impact the team with my experience, you know, playing the national team and playing last season. Playing all the games and, you know, playing actually 90 minutes in all the games, so my experience will be a big factor with me and the team. Well, my personal goal is to get as much clean sheets. Last year I got six, so this year probably looking to have eight or more. I'm looking for my team and I to you know, finish in the top three and go on into the intercall and come on victorious, winning the East Zone intercall and then going on to the National intercall. 
another female manager standing here with me, Manager Griffith of Speyside High. Now, we know the last match, unfortunately, you all would have experienced some of the effects of Tropical Storm Karen, but that means that you would have had a little downtime. Um, what was worked on during that time? Um, a lot of defensive work as well as striking and some passes. Yeah, what can we expect to see today? A much more improved performance, more discipline from the players and hopefully more awareness of the game of football. All right, so that's what we'll see. Thank you very much, Manager Griffith. Joined by Gabriel from Speyside High. Gabriel, obviously a student there. Let us know, how do you feel about the team and how would you break down the team's season thus far? Yeah, well, the this, this, this season was, was tragic for those boys and yeah. they come out great with a victory of South, the South North side. Right. When you when all went against Sour North, you all got the victory there. I mean, obviously Sour North, one of the powerhouses of the secondary schools football league over the past yeah, few years. Right. So, obviously that would have been a big turnaround for you all, right? You all have been turning around this season. And what message do you have for Trinity College East? Well, the best win, may the best win. May but, the best win? Yeah. Well, you know Trinity College East said it's just goals against you all, huh? Yeah, but may the best win. But I have more field space, I might take it with <laughs> because I go in the school to never. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have yeah. to support your own. You have to support, you have to support, support your own, Gabriel. Team. All right, tell us about one of your players. Well, Roberto Johnson, he transferred from Scarborough Sec. Yeah. He, he tries his best in training, but unfortunately, he wasn't here today. So, this is the, um, this is the player profile yeah. of Roberto Johnson. Let's take it in. Yeah. This player profile is brought to you by Shell. Well, my name is Roberto Johnson. I'm 17 years of age. I live at Speyside. I play midfield. I choose football because I grew up in a football household and you know everybody was always about football, football, football. So. I just had to pick it up. I play table tennis, I'm a national team player, well, ex-national team player. <laughs> well, outside of football, I just like to spend my leisure time with my friends. My favorite player is Cristiano Ronaldo, well, mostly because he always scores and you know, always a major part of it anywhere he goes. If I could spend the day with a footballer for one day, I think that would be Cristiano Ronaldo. Mad. Let teach me how we get like so strong. I guess more inspiration would be Jaya Shepard. We used to play on the same scabble sex side. Now he in presentation, like the big boys. And I like to see to him keep doing your thing, you know, you make it far. And you just keep on pressing. Yo, yo, microphone check, one, three, four, five. This is Brent. One, two, three, four, five. Bad man, no say number two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You'll just make sure the, the formation is the correct team, eh? You all put up a formation just now with St. Anthony's. Ding-a-ling, ding-a-ling, ding. So this 
This is Trinity. Welcome to Trinity College East. Heart of Trinity. Well, we are, we are not in Speyside, that's for sure. We are here in Trinity, in Trinity College East, of course, against Speyside, here in the heart of Trinity, and it's the home of Trinity College East. It's their first home game we are doing um, with this uh, very important game. Important in the sense, as I say, Brent, um, important because Trinity lie ninth, Speyside lies 11th in the table, and any of them winning today could move up to fifth. So very important game for both teams. Of course, good afternoon to all of you, and, and you're very correct, Colin. Uh, when you look at uh, Speyside High School, of course, you start to have conversations as it relates to the, the, the Pago teams in the SSFL so far. And uh, one thing can be said so far with this Speyside team is that they have shown uh, from the point standing uh, that they are able to compete. We've seen Bishops High School, of course, uh, finishing last place. Uh, the Speyside boys are warming up, uh, going through their paces before the game. Uh, they finished last place last year, Bishop High School, at the Bagel represented with two points. Uh, Speyside so far have four points. And what is remarkable, part of that four points was a victory against the very fancied San Juan North Secondary. So uh, this bunch is no pushover, that's for sure. And, uh, and we saw Trinity East in the last uh, production that we have. And one thing we both agreed with Colin as it relates to Trinity College East is the fact that they were creating chances. Uh, they created uh, arguably some of the better chances in the game against St. Anthony's College and they just weren't able to execute. Your favourite player, of course, Wiley, is out here today uh, and you would expect him uh, to be a threat uh, against this Bayside High School team. Yeah, certainly will be a, a threat. But it's interesting. I was asking the Speyside um, manager, what have they done when you, you know, because they lost 5 0 and 7 1 in their first two games, and it's a total transformation since then. So I asked her if they had new players coming in, some guys coming back into school, and she said, no. She said, all they did is um, they got a little bit more disciplined, they worked on, on certain areas of their game, and she said it paid off. And that, that is remarkable because I, I really feared for them after the first two wrongs when I saw the, 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 the licking they got um, I felt that hey this space I team is gonna gonna go nowhere but they've turned it around and now they could certainly they certainly look as if they can move up the table yeah without a doubt and uh, you know Colin uh, of course part of this production uh, is uh, giving a bit of analysis before the game and I was on the pitch uh, I was on the pitch recently uh, of course, leading up to, to, to this. And, and when you look at the surface, it's a very grassy surface, as we've seen uh, throughout Trinidad. There's uh, one or two spots within the field uh, because it's such a, a hot, humid day uh, and because the, the, the field uh, is very bone, uh, what we call uh, bone hard conditions, expect to see a lot of bounce on the ball, uh, but it's quite a flat surface. Uh, of course, we've done games here. One comes to mind in particular when Trinity East two years ago played Pfizer Bad uh, Senior Command and it was absolutely waterlogged. Uh, but it's a complete opposite today. It is very hot pitch side. I must say that, call it very, very humid. As you could see, some of the dirt patches on the pitch that would create uh, a bits of a bump and, uh, and of course, unpredictiveness as it relates to the ball roll. Uh, but all in all, the, the most, uh, the majority, at, at least 90% of the surface is grass. Uh, and I expect it, of course, uh, to, to have some sort of effect in the game today. What about the wind factor, Brent? I mean, you, you, the, it's, it's pretty breezy as well. We see some of the, the sponsors, um, feather banners uh, blowing in the in the wind, but it's pretty breezy at the moment as well. It, could that be a factor? Well, we were in the middle of a, of a housing complex, as you could see the effect of the wind, and, and it seems to, it seems to show that of course there's a bit of a, a bit of a swirl in the wind, and it's it's almost like it's entrapping the wind here. So it's not necessarily blowing in one direction. Uh, and of course we're in the middle of the the Trinity housing. Uh, development 
and because of that the wind has been swirling around as you correctly mentioned and yes that will have some impact in this afternoon's uh, proceedings of course Colin uh, the keys to the game for Trinity Colleges uh, when you look uh, we looked we both of course witnessed their performance last and we, we lamented heavily on how many chances they created and they weren't able to finish it and of course the set plays we, we, we talked very early St Anthony's had two or three corners quite early in the game and uh, Trinity College really struggled uh, to defend those corners. Yeah, I remember even Ron Lafurry was was talking about uh, they're not taking the chances and um, it's going to cost them and it came back to haunt them. What about Speyside, keys to their game? Well, again, talking to the management and team, correct, they talked about the discipline in the squad and, and that's what they went back to the drawing board. And, uh, of course, they have to remain compact in the way they approach this one throughout. All departments need to stay connected to each other, the defence midfield and forward. And they gave away in the boat defeats, the boat heavy defeats that they had, they gave away a lot of silly chances. Uh, and of course, today is about having almost perfect game. Well, the teams uh, have made their way out from the dressing rooms. We see the substitutes already seated on the respective benches. And the teams, in fact, have made their way out from the dressing rooms. We're going to capture them as you're seeing them now on camera. Here they come. Um, the team's just making their way to the front. The, we are waiting on the officials who are just about organizing themselves. And we should get action going underway in a little bit. Of course, the very experienced Michael Grace, he must have been very disappointed after this St. Anthony's game, Brent. Yeah, he would be. It, it's it's difficult as a as a as a coach, and uh, we talked about uh, how well organized they were, and and they were quite a, a well organized team, uh, and they created enough chances to win two football games, Colin. If we are That's to be honest, sure. and uh, I think for a coach, there's not much you can do there as it relates as it relates to tactics and approach of the game, but the individuals that did not. Of course, convert their chances is really the reason why uh, they succumbed uh, to a defeat against St. Anthony's College. Well, here comes the teams. Of course, uh, Speyside in a very rather bright color. And of course, um, so, so there are the Trinity College East players just meeting the, the officials and then meeting the Speyside team. Of course, a very bright yellow Speyside. And uh, the Trinity East, of course, they're in navy blue. We expect a very lively encounter here this afternoon. Both teams will be going all out to win this game. There are the Officials, of course, uh, Timothy Derry is the man with the whistle. There's uh, Kieran Myers, Kevin Williams are the two assistants, and the fourth official is Dean Ransom. So, so there are our officials, the two captains, just there taking the toss. Of course, um, the captain of Speyside is Jonathan Thomas and Romario Mahabia leading Trinity East. So let's, uh, let's look at the teams, the respective teams now, and we'll give you the lineups first and then the formation. But we'll give you the lineup of Trinity College East. The Seeley, in, the Seeley Williams, Charles Mahabia, Romario Mahabia, Terrell Wiley, Dejan Windsor, Javon Gomes. He's very, very tricky. Zachary Baird, Jeremiah Williams, Elijah Bain, and of course in goal, Aidan Hayes. And the coach, of course, the very experienced Michael Grayson. Let's have a look at the formation, Brent. Well, they started off in a 4-3-3 formation. Mahabia providing cover uh, for the midfield. And, of course, a shield in front of the back four. Look for Wiley to switch sides with Gomez regularly. And Williams was a handful all day long uh, against St. Anthony's College. Uh, his namesake, Isaiah Williams, found himself joining the attack frequently. A very fluid 4-3-3 formation. Uh, and they do get some numbers forward in the attack. Well, let's have a look at the Speyside lineup now. Uh, Speyside, of course, in e that bright yellow. There's Kern McDonald, DeLeon Beckles, Nicholas Sanchez, Jelani James, 
Ronaldo, Samuel, Adriel, George, Sale, Toppin, Denos, Carrington, then Jonathan Thomas, Giovanni Thomas, and Kadeem Joseph is the goalkeeper. Their coach, of course, is Kerry Lynch. Now let's have a look at their formation, Brent. 4-3-3 uh, three, three formation, as the, the manager rightfully mentioned, they've done a lot of work on their defensive shape. Sanchez, of course, is a man credited with the chance to, to of course, to create the chances of first face side high school. I expect them, Colin, to want to defend resolutely and make sure they don't give away anything here in this game. Well, we're just getting ready for the kickoff here. As it's going to be Trinity College East kicking. Kicking from north to south. Or oh, east to west. So, sorry, sorry, Brent. <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't good at geography, you know, in school. <laughs> it was terrible at geography. But here we go. Nice long ball looking for Wiley. Is he going to get involved early from the first minute? He's trying to get wrong his man, and he does that well. Can he keep it in? He does. Sends a good a cross in. Cross. Not a bad ball. But he was uh, getting a wrong McDonald. Topping, just committing the foul. It's going to be a free kick. It's going to be taken by Charles for Trinity East. Beard is wide at the right back. Elijah Bain is at left. Good ball, good ball. Oh, troubled. Well done by the keeper. He came out well there. Joseph punched it away. Speyside on the go. Samuel trying to get the better of Bain. Gives it to Woods James. Speyside. No team really settling down yet. It's with Jeremiah Williams. Wide on his left is Wiley. This is Wiley in possession. Gets it inside to Beckles. Jeremiah Williams going further down the line. Is it going to be a corner? I think he's not kept it in. So it's going to be a corner. The first corner of the game is conceded in the just a minute and a half. You could see it's a very hot day, Brent. The, 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 the usual adage of let the ball do the work. But the corner is taking short. Space side sleeping a little bit as Wiley going wrong his man and he's going to get another corner. A little bit of a deflection. Very hot conditions, Brent. They've got to be careful. Um, too, too much running is, is going to present them with problems later on. Yeah, I think for, especially for the Speyside High School team, uh, again, we talked about the travel coming here uh, from uh, Tobago. Uh, it's a 50-minute airplane ride, but sometimes that ride has good work by Wiley. Well, here's Wiley with the ball. Oh, just over the head of Williams. He couldn't get... He couldn't make enough height to get his head onto that, but it was an open goal if he was able to get his head onto that. This is Baird. Charles. That's a good ball. Good looking ball for, uh, for Beckles. Wiley. Oh, he's pulling on his man. Wiley just uh, took McDonald down, and it's going to be a free kick. He's a very direct player, Wiley. You don't see him getting around his man. That's very, very close. Williams just inches away. And just uh, had to get his head on it, Brent. Just needed his head on it, but uh, already we've seen uh, young Wiley involved in everything going forward for Trinity Colleges. We talked about the danger that he would present for Speyside High School. And already at the start of this, uh, he's already had two or three looks at the goal, uh, putting on a dangerous cross. Uh, across the face of the goal. What I like well, about him, Colin, I'm sure it's the same reason why you like him. Uh, he's very, very, uh, a very direct player. Oh, yeah. Well, it seems the man Dong, uh, it's Elijah Bain, he cleared it. And uh, see, when he, when he cleared the ball, he, um, the number 20 player, when he cleared the ball, he seemed to, there it is. Got into uh, a little bit of a. Uh, he is. It's like a bit of studs on yep. the ankle. So it was uh, a crunch in there. It's a good view of it there. It's, uh, definitely no real malicious no. intent in that, but uh, a bit late. But he's back up and uh, he's getting some treatment. He's gone off the field, but he'll be back, which is good news for Trinity Colleges. 
there is there is been getting ready to come back on in the meantime space side creating an attack of their own it's well cut out by charles this is james leaving it there for beckles this skipper well done by Bear, but he gives it right back to Thomas. It's a good ball from Sanchez. It's a foul committed by Wiley. It's a free kick for Speyside. Coming up to the fifth minute. Jared is Wiley a bit late with his challenge there. That's what you call a striker's challenge, they're calling it. Always late. How would you know? <laughs> I've heard about it. Oh, yeah. Well, it's going to be a, a goal kick. A good free kick at all. This game just taking a little bit of time to settle down. Both teams, I think, and passes at the moment going astray. I think they're just uh, taking a little time to get settled into the game. Of course, we talked about Speyside coming from Tobago. Not that Tobago is at, uh, like Las Vegas. <laughs> or Cancun for that or matter. Cancun, yes. It's um, just a very short plane right away. But here comes Trinity East. They lose out. This is, this is good. Good. A good run from George. Oh, it's a poor decision. Was it the, the ball from George to Toppin wasn't bad. Toppin's Toppin, decision. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He it's tried ball. to make a difficult pass with the outside of the right foot. It would have been better served just controlling his left foot than uh, having a crack on goal. So McDonald couldn't keep it in, so it's going to be a throw for Trinity College East. Charles gets a good ball there to Watts Beckles. Beckles plays it wide. Sorry, that's Isaiah Williams, sorry, playing it wide to Watts Wiley and he gets another corner. Again, the corner taken short. It's good skill. It's not a bad goal. At one time, I thought Teddy it was Lever. just, yeah, I thought it was getting just on the penalty spot. And it came off the outside of the boot and went behind for a, for a goal kick. Well, we talked a lot about uh, Trinity College. He's executing when they get into these areas. He had all the time, and He had all the time uh, to make sure and deliver a proper cross. He's, uh, and of course, goals just sent that wide. So the goal kick for Trinity College East. Not such a great kick. Space out. The Sanchez does well. Gets it, of course, to James. This is Samuel. He do well to get there. Couldn't get there. McDonald, in fact, making the overlapping run, the right full back. Got the ball. Good through ball coming from James, but uh, just couldn't get to cut it off. Windsor couldn't control it. Here comes Speyside. Oh, trying to bully his way through with Sanchez. And in fact, uh, committed a foul in the process. So it's going to be a free kick for Trinity College East. No goals yet. Just about coming up to nine minutes in this first half. Well, one thing's for sure, Colin, uh, when you look at the shape of the Speyside High School side team so far, uh, they've put a lot of emphasis on uh, 
on the way they set up defensively. They've, they've not thrown a lot of numbers forward. Uh, sometimes six and seven yellow shirts are staying behind the ball. Uh, and of course, they allowed uh, uh, left room for Sanchez and Samuel to do some sort of magic, sometimes occasionally joined by Toppin. But one thing for sure, the emphasis seems to be on not conceding here this afternoon. Well, you remember what I told you? I spoke to the manager and after their first two rounds, I said, what have you all done? Here's a shot coming, just wide. I said, what have you all done? And she said, well, we worked on our defense, which they had to, because they conceded 12 goals in the first two games. And here's a handball here, just grazed off the hook. Almost looks like he uh, was wearing gloves. So very goalkeeper-esque. So Brent, having conceded 12 goals in your first two games, they've only conceded three in the next two. So they have, in fact, uh, worked hard on their, their defense. Well, we've seen it uh, in terms of uh, not just having numbers behind the ball, Colin, but also from an organizational perspective. And uh, they've looked well-shaped in terms of the way they've set themselves up. They have two holding midfielders in front of the back four. And uh, they've asked for extra duty by the wing players to get back defensively. So they really essentially defended with eight players, keeping eight players behind the ball. Wiley. Well cut off by Carrington, but Wiley wins it and then he's uh, fouled. So it's going to be a free kick for Trinity College East. Of course, we saw that beautiful free kick Brent, on Wednesday by Thomas for St. Anthony's. Absolutely marvelous. Here is the, the trip from behind on Wiley. Well, he's uh, picked off from where he left against St. Anthony's College. He spent a lot of time on the turf. Uh, one of the St. Anthony's defenders struggled really to stay up with uh, the young man from Arima in Trinidad. I have to suggest that they're going for it here, Colin. Yeah, I would think so. Looks like Isaiah Williams. Here it is. The shot taking, it comes off the wall. In fact, it uh, was Romario Mahabia. He's now chasing down the ball. Tries to get it over. Not about it. This is Wiley. Oh! He had to use his right foot, Brent, and his right foot seems to be more to just a walk on. <laughs> Very left footed. That's, too, that's hit too long. That's a ball more in hope than anything else. Coach Kerry Lynch of Speyside. Feel pretty comfortable with the start they have. Well, Wiley have uh, posed uh, problems in uh, one or two times he had uh, his defender 1v1. But what he'd be happy with, Colin, is the fact that uh, they've been very competitive when it comes to the second ball. And they've won their fair share of those, and uh, they've won their fair shares of 50 50 challenges. So Sanchez couldn't hold on to it, gets it to McDonald, McDonald to James. This is Beckles. Thomas, this is good football from yeah, Speyside. Not bad, not bad at all. Then it back inside to James. Oh, that's, that's a good, a good ball. Classy. This is the. Looks like he's offside. He's offside. He's offside. He's offside. He's offside. Yeah. Topping is offside. But a lovely move, Brent. They, they knocked the ball around nicely. There's the first bit of movement we've seen from Speyside. But unfortunately, Topping went just in ahead and uh, he was offside. And he took his goal well as. He took the goal well. Unfortunately, he uh, was offside. So we'll have a look at that again, Brent. Well, it's the first time for the game that Speyside was able to put the ball down. Exquisite pass there. And then topping. Slides it right on. He just needed to hold his run a bit. And uh, the thing about it, Colin, he's looking along the line. He, he's obviously coming off, a wing, off of the wing, trying to get into the middle of the goal. If he's looking along the line, he should be able for himself to calculate if he's onside or offside. And but I, I like the movement from space side. They struck about four or five passes together and then found topping. But as you rightly said, he went just a little bit too early. Just too early. 
was much better. And it's, uh, it's the first time they've done that uh, in the 14 minutes or so that we've uh, we've played. And it shows that they're capable of doing it. Well, I tell you what, Greg, uh, Michael Grace has got to, his team has got to be wary of that now. Because if they're going to be pushing the ball around like that and can penetrate, then they could, could be a very dangerous team. This is Isaiah Williams. So went, bad for idea. The, went for the return. Of course, that is Michael Grayson, very experienced, former Queens Royal College student, and then coaching at St. Augustine, now with Trinity East. I, I can't remember, Brent, if he played for the national team, but he was a wonderful midfielder. I think he did have a stint with the, the national program. Of course, our famed coach, responsible for a plethora of talent coming out of this country. So, the Coca-Cola score at the moment, Trinity College East, zero, and Spearside High, zero. That's not something I like to see. Goalless games, Brent. <laughs> we don't show goalless games on Sportsmax, on CNC Stream, on of course CNTV. We don't show goalless games. So we're going to await the first goal and it should, it should come. What do you think we're going to get it, Brent? First goal. Well, uh, of course, uh, the run of play. Sorella talked about uh, over 100 goals scored so far. 120 to be exact. And, and of course, nine of those are on this broadcast. So the odds are of very much in stack for goals here this afternoon and of course we talk a lot about uh, Trinity College East and the amount of chances they created in the last game and uh, as we take a look at this uh, infringement here it's a bit of a painful one it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of body in that of course uh, Mahabia and Williams are the top goal getters for Trinity Colleges. As we take another look at this in fridge, it looks like a knee, the left knee. So, of course, uh, Bain was the recipient, and now he is the, of course, it looks like uh, the signal there. It's, uh, it would suggest like, that uh, there might be a substitution, yeah, yeah. A substitution for McDonald. And uh, very well, there. there is some of our sponsors, of course, Shell, First Citizen, Digicel, Malta Carib. A oh. colony you would have to expect with uh, Malta Carib being the sponsor that we'd have uh, a Christmas package on delivery. Well, I, I, I always look forward to it, Brent, but um, you know, it doesn't seem Sports to Sports Max normally gives us a nice Christmas sending away. Brent, we, we, we're in September. Well, uh, you're looking at one Christmas can already? One can plan, Colin. Okay. I hear you. I thought we'd talk about that a little closer to like... November? I will talk about it a bit more often you as we get, as we get uh, okay, closer. I hear you. This is just the first of, of many to come. Okay. Well, it's not good news because um, the player Dong, let's see, it seems to be... Looks like McDonald. Cool McDonald for... Is it McDonald? Yes, it looks like McDonald. And uh, the stretcher has gone on, so... Well, let's take a look at it, Colin. Yeah. It, at, uh, look at the left knee of McDonald. Look at that with Bean. It looks like a full blunt Ooh. collision, and it is the next yeah. angle of it here, Colin. The both knees oh. collide there. Open face, open openness of the knee. You think openness. that's the end of the afternoon for him? Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, the good thing, well, there's, there's no good thing in an injury, of course, but uh, it more looks like it's, a, it's it, in terms of a impact and not necessarily a twist or a pull. As uh, Coach Lynch giving his charges, uh, some instructions. But interestingly enough, Brett, you, you, you notice all the players have come around for water. Um, it's such a hot, humid day, as we keep mentioning. I'm not surprised. And uh, of course, uh, Coach Grayson uh, having a word with his new look captain, Mahabia. Got rid of the 
the excessive here, I would call it. He has absolutely no hair now. Look at look at it, Brent. What such a beautiful day. It's just, uh, to me, it's just a trifle too hot. I'm not sure about you. It's a little bit too hot. Of course, uh, we see some of the fans here. Yep. They've come out. They've come out to support the Blue Hawks. Okay. Of course, uh, Trinity College East, better known as the Blue Hawks. And there is young McDonald being substituted. Let's just hope that, um, or being taken off, not being uh, well easy, he is going to be substituted, but being stretched off. And you'd hate to see that on a football field, especially with youngsters. So he's making his way off and we'll give you the name of the substitute in a moment. Dalrymple. So Kyle Dalrymple going on for McDonald. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't look Colin like it's a like for like change. Uh, Dalrymple has slotted in into the centre back position, or is he going to go out to the right? Yeah, he is going out. It is a like for like change. He has a, a daunting task ahead of him. He, he's now up against, uh, of course, Wiley. <laughs> Goal kick for the Blue Hawks. Cleared up field by Carrington, but one back here by Mahabia gets it to Wiley. Not a bad looking ball at all from Wiley to Windsor. It's a good ball. Excellent ball going down Wiley's. Gomes, we haven't seen much of Gomes in the game, very left footed as well. Isaiah Williams keeps it in. Sends it back. Ball. He's all alone. Ball. Oh, oh to score. easy chance there for Jeremiah Williams, and he's headed it wide. He just stood there, Brent, and all he had to do was to direct the header on target, and he headed it wide. No challenge. He was not nothing. He, it was set, sent a good cross by by Isaiah Williams right on the head of Jeremiah and he headed it wide. Unbelievable. Trinity should have taken the lead. It's Bechtels with the ball. This is Bechtels. He couldn't control it. It's picked up by Mahabia. This is Bain. It's it to Williams. Back to Mahabia. I see her. Gives it away. Stopping. Stopping gets there. Looks to send Sanchez away. Out comes goalkeeper. Hayes. This is Bear. Well won here by Thomas. To Sanchez. It's going to be a throw for Space Side High. It's a good ball to Gomes. Oh, he's so cleared it. Had the right idea. Went over the head of the defender. But um, good defending by, by Space Side. Oh, you're starting to see one or two holes and gaps becoming apparent in the Space Side High School defense. And uh, of course, Trinity College East attackers are, are obliging themselves. This is why he getting it short. Is he tripped? Yes, he was. a tricky customer. Form four student from Trinity Colleges. She just has a one-track mind, doesn't he, Colin? He, oh, yeah. 
every time he picks the ball up, he has one thing in his mind, and that is to elude his defender. And he has a good change of pace as well. So the free kick seems to be Jeremiah Williams going to take it. Bad ball. Riley flicking it on. Oh, he slips there. This could be problems. Williams, Williams, a ball. Finally cleared away. But real problems there for Thomas. When the ball is eventually popped in, Thomas has all sorts of problems to clear in his lines. Wiley and Williams all over and the ball eventually pops out and is cleared. They live in a charmed light, aren't they, Space Side High? I tell you, I don't know how Trinity is not, not they're not in the lead yet. But again, Greg, we see we saw it with against St. Anthony's where they missed some chances. And again, the same thing is happening here this afternoon. And you know, Colin, the, the chances that they're creating, uh, a lot of the reason why they have not been able to execute is really down to their application. They seem to be, of course, another look at Coach Grayson, they seem to be very uncomfortable when they had to pull that the final trigger. That's when uh, any good striker or anyone that's uh, a young striker or gold poacher, that's when you're supposed to be your most relaxed. It's a good ball into the box. There's Mahabia trying to get it to watch Struggle again. Williams. Causing some problems, Brent. This is Sanchez trying to find Samuel. And in fact, it's a free kick. Samuel brought down by Bain. But they give the ball right back. Well, I thought the free kick was taken, but the referee says that uh, it wasn't taken from the right spot. And he's asking oh, to take the kick. Well, we can see here Bain was referee Derry. Bain, of course, uh, impeding Sanchez. Just about 26 minutes gone. Reflection made it quite easy for Hayes. It's not a bad ball at all for Gomes. Notice the bumps of that ball, but Gomes does well to control it. Comes inside of his man. This, oh, he was looking there to get it to Windsor. Sanchez, very quick, young customer. He's a real hustler. Gets a good ball out towards uh, Jane. Oh, bad ball. Oh, that was that Rimple who sent it through the forward to Sanchez. Windsor. That's well won by Thomas. That's uh, Jonathan Thomas. Of course, there's Jonathan Thomas. This is Giovanni Thomas. But he gives it away. Isaiah Williams to Jeremiah Williams. Being confronted by Dalrymple. Of course, uh, both Jeremiah and Isaiah are brothers. And this is Jeremiah on the ball. Gets it to Windsor. Windsor has the shot. He put as well. It was, it was a little bit difficult, Brett. The, shit, the ball was dipping on the keeper, but he got his body behind it well. That wasn't a bad effort. Not a bad effort at all. The ball was always dipping there. Wins though with the, with the opportunity, the young man from Shagornas. Gomes get there. That's well to keep it in. Taking on Thomas. 
Oh, he plays a bad boy. He's looking for Jeremiah, Wi Jeremiah Williams. James, long ball towards Sanchez. Cross comes Charles. For kick for the Blue Hawks. Was referee Derry. That's not a good free kick. It's going to be a throw for Trinities. So the Coca Cola score confirmation. It's a Trinity East nil, Speyside High nil. We've been playing for just about half an hour. Gomes looking for Williams. Jeremiah Williams kicks it his shift. Has the shot! Oh, just wide. Took it on his chest nicely and hit it on the volley and it went just wide. Jeremiah Williams starting to pose some problems. On the ball is kept across here, gets over the defender head. It's good skill by Williams. Just needs to hit the target there. Never really fully got his laces behind that one. But again, uh, he's providing to be a real goal threat for Trinity College East so far. They're really turning the screws here and uh, they just uh, haven't been able to find the back of the net. And again, Colin, again, talk about execution in yeah. the final third. Finishing your chances. On, on Wednesday, Brent, and the same thing is happening here again today. Some of the players on the Trinity East bench, the substitutes. Well, it's interesting to note, Colin, the last time that uh, Speyside was in the Premiership was back in 2017. They ended their campaign with 10 points. They won three, lost 10 and drew one. Uh, they scored 11 and scored 44. Well, uh, they have four out of 10 points. Uh, I would uh, put a wager that they might just end up above that 10-point mark. I think they lost, in 2017 as well, they, they lost to Trinity East by three goals to nil. So it's um, they would be hoping for better luck this time around. But they, they, they're certainly holding their own at the moment. They've, had, they've created one or two chances. This is Samuel with Sanchez. Leaves it for James. Very ambitious shot from coming from James. Never really tr troubled Aidan Hayes, the man in the goal for Trinity East. So there's 32 and a half minutes gone. Still, we await the first goal here at the Trinity College East ground. Well, the tempo of the game, Colin, it's not uh, its not been the pace that we'd expect. Of course, the humidity and heat, as we mentioned, are leading up to this one. Would have, have some play. That's a good ball from George. In an offside position with Samuel. So the free kick for Trinity College East. The kick has been taken, sent downfield. But it comes right back. This is Bean, he does well. Jeremiah Williams, he's brought down. It's going to be a free kick for Trinity East. So uh, Williams uh, on the turn. Substitute Dyrimple using illegal measures to bring his man down. Illegal, I like that, Brent. He just kicked him down, didn't he? That was <laughs> malicious, though. Wasn't malicious. Certainly illegal. It seems that uh, Williams is starting to play most of the football on the left-hand side, and Wiley yeah. looked to have been going Gone through, through the, the middle. Yeah. 
they need to score, they need to put the ball into the back of the net, Colin. They've created more than enough chances. Well, here's a chance for Gomes to get it at least back across the box. That's not a bad looking ball, but the keeper does well. Brave. That's good stuff by the keeper. Kadeem Joseph in goal for Space Side. And here goes James. This is a good run. He tries to get it back inside to Sanchez. Sanchez does well as tries to get around. Tries to get around. Sealy couldn't. But James looks an interesting player. Jelani James, bro. Made a good run going up the side of the field. And he definitely showed a good turn of pace to get up. As we could see, uh, Captain Thomas coming up to make a long throw. And we talked about. Uh, Trinity East vulnerability as it relates to set plays. It's not a bad effort, but it was just wide. Again, was it control of the header? No, it wasn't. But uh, he got there first. The uh, Trinity College has really struggled against St. Anthony's when the ball was played into the box from retakes, corners, and, and throwings. A lot of that, Colin, is really down to taking responsibility uh, and making sure that you're the player that wants to get your head on it first. Here's Gomes. Oh, Gomes gets the better of Thomas. Giovanni Thomas wasn't sure where the ball was. And Gomes just flicked it over his head. And um, luckily, it was clear that it's going to be a corner for Trinity East. Just about 35 minutes gone here. While he's looking for it short, as per usual, Gomes gives it to him. Here goes Wiley, but uh, did a little too much there, and it's gone out of the play. Of course, the goalkeeping coach for Trinity East told me, Brent, here's some of the crowd at the game. The Trinity East coach told me that um, if Wiley scores today, he's promised him a, a new pair of boots. And, but they have to win the game. So he may score, he may score and they lose, he gets no boots. And here he goes! And he's a little bit too far ahead of him. And they go to the road, that's a poor kick, but he gets away with it. Picked up by Mahabia. Trying to get it to Williams. This is Jeremiah. Turns well with it. Gets it back to Mahabia. Windsor has to come all the way back to Bear. Sanchez controls it nicely. Gets it uh, back, of course, to Giovanni Thomas. Sanchez plays it to top it. Top it to James. James looking there uh, to get that ball through to George. But this is George. He's got the better of the Trinity defense. He was looking for the shot. Still George to top it. This is good from Spaceside. George looks to get around his man. Giovanni Thomas is fouled and it's going to be a free kick for Speyside. But what I liked about that, Brent, is that Trinity East, they kept, they kept closing down the Speyside players. They weren't giving them the room. They were trying to play the ball around and they were just closing it down. It was good defending. Here is the free kick. What's the far post? This could have been hits the bar. Sanchez hits the bar from underneath the bar. Unbelievable. It was easier to put that ball in the back of the net, but here comes Gomes. Well won by Carrington. Well, Sanchez hit the bar, Brent, when I thought it was easier to put the ball in the back of the net. He was under the bar. Here we have a look at it. Well, we talked about their vulnerability on set plays. Header gets there. Sanchez on the chest. The easiest of chances, and he crushes it against the crossbar. I tell you what, how did he miss that? He was all alone there with goalkeeper Hayes, with the easiest of chances of just. It was the, the hardest thing to do, do was to hit the ball, Correct, yeah. and he hit it. He's a boss. <laughs> well. 
going to be a throw? No. If, yes, it is a throw for Trinities. Coming up to the 40th minute of this game, just about getting into the last six minutes or so. Then we have added on time. This is Williams. It's offside. Yes, in an offside position there was is it Isaiah? Seems to be Isaiah Williams. Colin, so free kick. leading into this one, we, we talked about Trinity's uh, scoring their chances. They haven't done that. We talked about them, of course, uh, not being uh, making sure they're not vulnerable and set plays, and they have been. So, they, so they, of course, they've uh, this game has gone exactly as we predicted so far. This is a good knock. This is stopping. Looking to get it through towards Sanchez. Good defending. But here comes Gomes. This could be a chance for Trinity College. He's put it a little too far ahead of him. He cut inside nicely and uh, he went a little too far. Don't think it's a foul, Brent. I think he just stretched too much for the ball and collided with the defender, but I certainly don't think it was the defenders uh, coming into him and, and fouling him. But let's have a look. He tries to cut inside his, of his defender, Thomas, and the trailing defender, Siobhan Thomas, gets the ball for us. That's for sure, Colin. I think you could have seen the ball just running away from him all the time. It was a good idea. He cut inside of the defender. I think he was looking for that shot with the left foot. So he cut inside to hit the left foot. But the ball just kept running away from him on this surface. So very predictable. We know he wants to cut in on his left foot. And uh, is Coach Grayson making some notes? I think he has written big on that uh, board that he has scored score, your score, chances. Score, score. <laughs> Here it is again, Colin. He cuts inside. Yes, he over pushes it and then lunges. Looks like he trips over the ball. I'm, I'm quite sure, uh, Colin, he, he, he's going to have the same speech that he gave against St. Anthony's College at halftime. He's going to have to do it again against Bayside High. The only difference is uh, the only difference is that they haven't conceded. That's right. They really need to do a better chance, and a better job in finishing their chances. Because you know the laws of average, Colin. You, if you don't finish your chances, right. you will concede. Samuel was trying to get a ball up close and close to top end. It was picked up by James. James sends a searching ball there, looking for Sanchez, but uh, too close to goalkeeper is. Mahabia. Very experienced player is Mahabia, but he gets away the ball. Charles towards Mayer. Gives it away. This is George in possession. Looking for some movement. They're trying. You know what I like about Space Side Brent? There are times when they pick up the ball and they try to knock it three, four, five passes. And they have been doing a bad job. The, uh, the real question is, Colin, is why they don't do it more often? Because when they That's do right. do it, they create chances and they, they look like the dominant team. There's George. Just about uh, a minute and a half to go in normal time. We understand that there's going to be about five minutes out of long time. Minimum of five minutes. We've had a couple injuries. No VAR, Brent, but here's a shot. Just wide. I saw today, Brent, I don't know if you were watching um, any of the English football, but um, Bournemouth had a goal that the linesman flagged out offside for. They went to VAR and it was overturned and the goal was given. 
I think uh, Trinity College Moko would want the same. Because that call against Pleasantville. Here's a shot by Thomas, the centre half. It's a good centre half strike. Well, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't comment on that. <laughs> I'd leave that for you. This is Bale. That's a good ball towards Jeremiah Williams. For a good tackle, excellent defending from Carrington. That concedes a throw. This is Wiley trying to cut inside. Oh. Wiley, big ball there. Sanchez, a dangerous customer. Gets it towards George. Good football. Oh, that's a that is ball. good football. This is Sanchez. Boy, Nothing ball. left. Talked Sanchez. about it. We talked about when they knocked the ball around. They created the chances. And would you believe it? Just on the stroke of the, four, the 45 minutes, Brent, they have taken the lead. Speyside through that man, Nicolas Sanchez. He is a very tricky customer. What I liked about it, they knocked it a couple of passes and then he was sent through. Well, George with the good two pass, Sanchez, the coolest customer on the park, slides at one pass here. Look at that poor finish. Composure and tucks it in to the old Indian bag. We spoke about it. Trinity College is creating all the chances, not converting in theirs. Speyside gets their second chance and puts it into the back of the net. One nil to Speyside. I heard you, you were giving Coach Grace his halftime talk. You have, you've got to change it now. <laughs> because you said you, you, the only difference is they didn't concede. Well, they've conceded now. So it's very reminiscent of the St. Anthony's game. But here is Sanchez, the man who scored the goal. Try to get it across. Trinity Colleges only have themselves to blame, Colin. They've really shot themselves in the foot with the amount of chances that they've missed here this afternoon. Not only that, Colin, sometimes in the positions that they're in. They should have turned some of the positions that they're in in terms of uh, where they are in the park and created in the goal squad. It's just been... Isaiah Williams looking for his brother, Jeremiah. Well, that's good defending by Dalrymple. Comes right back, plays it out, gives away the corner. But uh, ensured that uh, Williams wasn't getting further inside the box. <laughs> Isaiah is going to take the corner. So we in the second minute of the minimum of five minutes added on time. There's Isaiah. Is he going to shoot? Sends the ball across goal. That should be appealed off the top of the head of... Looks like, like Mahabia. Mahabia. Unlucky. That could have crept into the far post, man. Right? So just a, a, a glancing head there by Mahabia, the young man from uh, Sandy Grandi, upper six student here at Trinity Colleges. This is stopping. It's it to George, the man who set up the goal for Sanchez. This is James. I like the look of George, James and Sanchez, uh, Colin. They're very capable on it. And uh, look at this for composure. Just tucks it alongside his, gives him absolutely no chance. I put it into the back of the net. I would, I've seen some more experienced strikers, Brent, blast that ball over bars. I think going for power. He was so composed, he just placed it away from the keeper. But here's Wiley. Oh, he's brought down. So a free kick for Trinity East, played about two and a half minutes, That's about, sorry, three and a half minutes of the five minutes added on time thus far. That's a dangerous ball, can head it away, probably will. 
corner for Trinity East. Can they level it, Brent? Just in the final minute. In the final minute of the five Allion minutes. Can Trinity East get back into this game before half time? That's a good shot. Comes. Oh, a goal. oh, my word. Who is that? Would you believe it? He kicked it over the bar. You well, I see Williams. No wonder he's put the shirt over his head. Let's have a look, Brent. A Colin. Oh, unbelievable. That's a chance even you can score, Colin. I was going to say you, Brent. I, I, I would have done that with my eyes closed. That is such well, a tragedy. He had, he had the opportunity to bring Trinity's level at halftime. He missed it. And that's the story of Trinity College East. They missed chance after chance after chance. Well, when you sum up the half, Colin, they really only have themselves to blame. The boys in blue, they've created a, a plethora of chances. Uh, some of them, some unbelievable misses. And uh, despite their dominance in play, inside their dominance in territorial advantage, they still managed to find themselves down a goal to one to Speyside High School. Yes, they certainly find themselves a goal down here to Speyside. And Speyside would be happy with the amount of work they've done here uh, this afternoon. They've come, uh, of course, and they're looking for a victory. They're looking for three points. And I, as I said before, the winner could go as high as fifth at the end of this game. So there we have it at the Coca-Cola halftime score here. It's Speyside High School. They're leading Trinity College East by one goal to nil. We're going to take a break and come back. Half time here at Trinity College Ground with me, our student guest hosts. Uh, we have Gabriel and Akil. Uh, Akil, tell me a little bit thoughts on the first half. 
To me, all of us have the structure and the position. We have the team was good, but we need to improve on our attack and play and finish our chances. All right, Gabriel. To me, the side not putting with the chances, but space side finding the goal often. All right, that's our commentary team of our guest hosts. But right now, let's take it to upstairs, Colin and Brent. Well, the highlights of the first half, Brent, of course, um, dominated really by Trinity East. And yeah, they created a whole host of chances. And just like they left off against St. Anthony's College, they just could not find the back of the net. Williams again with a free header misses his opportunity. And then this one here by Wiley created in double team. And still, the ball cleared off. Just wasn't to be Trinity College each day in front of goal. Williams continuously being a threat. Good long range effort there by that man Windsor. Another opportunity there for Williams. The Williams brothers, of course, getting their chances. And we talked about the vulnerability of Trinity College's with Sanchez set plays. Sanchez hitting the bar. Sanchez hitting the bar. Thomas with a long range effort. And then a moment of brilliance, of course, laid on a platter there to that man from George to Sanchez with love. 1 0 for Speyside High School, right on the stroke of half time. Sanchez put in the but, ball. But still, Brent, Trinity, that, this is the goal here with, with Sanchez. He took it so well, very, very composed. But this, he is just tucking it into the corner. And uh, you, you have to say that uh, for a young man, he took his goal very, very well. But here is the chance, Brent, probably the miss of the season so far. He should have uh, scored and equalized. But let's go down to hands. Uh, he's got uh, a guest with him. Indeed, Gabriel is here with me. A moment of brilliance from Sanchez. How did it feel when you saw that goal, Gabriel? Well, I feel amazing to see my side in the lead today. Uh -huh. And... I feel much support, although we ain't have no fans down here, but... Well, as we're talking about support, right, let us know what the support is like when you all play in Tobago from the actual parents of the students. Well, the support is very positive. All the player, parents come out, even yeah. though they have work and things, they come out and support their son in what they do, and they always train on up in space, right? Well, whilst parents support in a big way, there are some rules for parents to follow. This feature is brought to you courtesy Malta. Competition in youth sport, when defined positively, can be a healthy way to teach important life skills and lessons. For one thing, sport can teach youngsters how to deal with challenges and overcome obstacles. It can also teach athletes how to be gracious winners and learn from their losses. And that's where parents come in. As a parent of a student athlete, you are in the prime position to impart these lessons onto your young wards. To begin with, as parents, you must ensure that your child is always having fun. Ask questions, observe behavior, and listen. It is a time-proven principle that the more fun an athlete is having, the better they will perform. So focus on the process a lot more than the outcome and let your child know that winning or losing does not define who they are. Additionally, to encourage that playful and yet competitive environment, allow your child to view their opponent as their partner and not their enemy. That way, the better an opposing player performs, the better they should be driven to perform as well. And on top of that internal drive, parents must always be their child's biggest motivators. A parent's role in the lives of their young athletes is to encourage and support, lift them up when they have had a bad game, and give kudos when they have done well. But leave the coaching to the coach. Unless, of course, you are the coach. Parents must respect the role of the coach as the head of the team. In doing so, they show their child that they too must show respect to the coaching staff even if they disagree with the tactics. And while it is imperative to separate both roles, it is never a bad idea to volunteer to help the team. Raise funds, wash uniforms, fill water coolers, do whatever you can, because your child's team can always use that added support. And here's where we will say it again just for good measure, leave the coaching to the coach. 
While you cannot control how things turn out on the field, you can have some measure of control over what goes into your child's body. Ensure they have a balanced diet and that they are well hydrated so that when they hit the pitch, they are full of energy and ready to go. And another thing you can do is to ensure that your child does not neglect their studies. Help them come up with a study plan and find ways to encourage them to balance their sport and their academics. Being a parent is a challenge, and adding the role of parent of a student athlete even more so. But this responsibility must not be taken lightly, as the support and encouragement goes a long way in the development of independent adults who are ready to take on the world. Now, Trinity College has definitely made its mark on the SSFL over the past few years. Uh, they continue to prove why this should be part of the Premier Division, though still in its development stage. Akil, being part of the SSFL and just football in general, what would you say it has done for the school? Well, being in the SSFL means a lot to us and it could give the school and open up opportunities for our players if they want to further their career in football. Right, excellent. It's Trinity College and the SSFL. It's brought to you by Shell.
Well, welcome back here to Trinity College East in Trin City. It's, we're at the home of Trinity East, the Blue Hawks, but they are trailing at the half by one goal to nil, a goal scored in the stroke of halftime by Nicolas Sanchez. And Brent, it must be frustrating for the technical staff of Trinity East. We saw on Wednesday the, a host of chances they missed. They've come here again and they've missed a host of chances and they trail. Well, it's not much uh, you can do as a coach. Of course, you, you will go through your various drills and practices and, and of course, uh, try to give the, the players, the, the, the offensive players, uh, some opportunities in front of the goal through practice sessions, etc. But a lot of goal scoring, as you would know, Colin, uh, comes down to confidence and, and comes down to that belief that you can put the ball in the back of the net. And uh, I think that is where they struggle. They just seem to lack... Uh, a lot of belief when they get in front of the goal and the conviction needed uh, for to put the ball into the back of it is just not there. Well, we're just about getting ready for the kickoff here, but uh, in the meantime, Trinity East seem to be making a substitution. Kishon Charles is making his way off, or has made his way off. And we'll just see the man number 15 coming on. He's made his way onto the field, and that is Riley Hill. So uh, that's, a, that's a big loss, Colin, for Trinity East. We talked a lot about uh, Charles's performance against St. Anthony's College, and he hasn't put a foot wrong here this afternoon. Free kick for Speyside. They really can't afford to go two goals down, Colin. Uh, Trinity Colleges. It's going to be the free kick. It's going to be taken by Thomas. That's Jonathan Thomas. Oh, that's well. good. He's done really well. Excellent there on the part of George. Gomes looking for Wiley. Wiley. Wiley does well. Oh, going one way then. The there goes Wiley. Oh, he took on three bread, turned the other way, and went up the line. But that's a good tackle in the end, coming in from Carrington. Of course, Carrington is twice his size. <laughs> Such a positive player, Wiley. This is Mahabia. Getting it to Isaiah Williams. Back to Mahabia. This is Gomes. Keeps it in well. Sends the crossover. This saw. is Windsor. Oh, he tried to set up Isaiah Williams. It's a good ball wide now. Jeremiah Williams. Finally the cross comes. Keeper does well. There is the confirmation of the substitute. Riley Hill. Coming on there for Kishon Charles. So Hill for Charles. That's space side. Trying to make some movement down the right side. For Trinity East. Clearing the lines. And it's going to be a throw for space side. Dalrymple getting it inside there. Good ball. Goes straight to the keeper. There was Jelani James trying to get that ball wide. Williams in a real tussle there with Thomas. And in fact, uh, the referee thinks that he's brought down Giovanni Thomas. It's going to be a free kick to four. There's the foul. Look at the, le the left arm of Williams. Indeed in uh, Thomas. This is Sanchez. Losing out. Cleared up the field by Hill. Yeah. 
Hill losing out. Nice ball inside. The shot comes just wide. Shot there coming, it looks like from Jelani James. Once There's Jelani James, Brent. Yeah, once he creeps into the half, uh, we've seen him then sim something similar in the first half. Seems to have the license to shoot from distance. I must say, he does have a bit of ability. So, goalkeeper here has to be on his P's and Q's. That's a four clearance. This could, this be, could trouble. be trouble. Oh, he couldn't get the shot away. Couldn't get the shot away there. Look to be topping. But this is George trying to get it to James. Came off at James. Is going to be a, so there was topping right through Brent and couldn't get a shot off. Let's have a look at it. In the meantime, one of the Trinity East players down. Here is topping, Brent. Well, he's done the right thing in his first touch getting across the defender. But uh, give some credit to the Trinity College East defenders for getting back and making sure that Toppin doesn't have a clear view on goal. But the likes of Sanchez and Gomes, Toppin, uh, to name a few. And of course, George and James, Colin, they are providing quite a handful. Oh, yeah. Going forward. Going side. forward. Once, once they get possession of the ball, Brent, and they create some space for, for, for one another, and their, their passing is not bad. They, they're doing the correct things. I like what they're doing. They're picking up the ball, running into the spaces, laying off the ball, going back for the return. I think it's not a bad effort from them at all. And there's some quality in their play as well, particularly when that uh, group of five players uh, get themselves involved in things. That's right. And you can see why uh, they've been able to turn their results around. They've, they've defended resolutely and uh, they look like a potent attacking uh, force. Space side again. Sanchez trying to get it wide. A bit of he's a panic. He's, he's has offside. A chance, but he's offside. Top it. Top it went again. Went a little too early. It's going to be a free kick for Trinity East. This is Mahabia with the kick, not a bad effort, looking for Gomes. Gomes does well, but uh, keep it away from Carrington. This is James, We're looking more for Samuel. It's going to be a throw for Trinity East. It's about 52 minutes gone, space sides, high. They leave that one goal to now. Well, it's interesting to note that uh, the space side team, of course, the last time they were in the SSFL Premiership was uh, back in 2017. And uh, a lot of the young men that uh, represented space side high school have not been part of this league format. We have uh, at least three or four players that played. And, uh, for a bunch of relative newcomers, Columbia, they've really credited themselves well. I tell you, I was scared for them. Here's Samuel. Talked about him a lot. It's one a corner. But, you know, as I said to you, I was a little scared for them, Brent, after the first two rounds. But they've really turned it around beautifully. And when Malik, when Malik went there and beat them 5-0, I thought, hey, you don't go to Tobago and beat the schools 5-0. That's unheard of. So I was very fearful for them, but I'm so happy that they've turned things around. It's very competitive, and they're very competitive. They're gonna do. They're gonna do okay. They're gonna do well, and uh, give a lot of credit to Coach Lynch. Away. Here's the corner. Not a bad effort. Oh, boy, I tell you, you're looking for handball as usual, Brent. Get it away. 
eventually they get it up to Wiley. Wiley turns his man. Here's the counter, but uh, good defending. Excellent defending on the part of Carrington. Speckles gets it to Toppin. Back to Beckles. So he's he's done well. He actually, Beckles. when they knock it around, Brent, they're not bad. Toppin. Finally, they give it away. This is Sanchez. Is that a foul? It is. Free kick for Trinity East. It's a good That's a good ball. ball. This is goal. Oh, 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 oh. Chance number nine. Chance number nine. Red Rose are begging. But well, there's only so many times you can talk about missed opportunities and here it is again, Gomes eludes the goalkeeper and with the easiest of chances, of course, Colin, if there were an excuse to be given to him, there was a slight bubble before he tried to execute, but you got to finish. You got to, where do you get it, those positions? You don't get those opportunities every five minutes. You unless, get it once for the game. Unless you're Trinity College East, who seem to be getting it every five minutes. <laughs> and they just don't want to score. It was a lovely through ball. He was getting Wiley. I thought Wiley was going to snatch it from him because Wiley was near to him. And Wiley sort of just moved aside. Wiley had a, a similar opportunity against St. Anthony's College, if yep. uh, you recall. There he is, young. Terrell Wiley. That's not a bad ball. Taken by the keeper. Of course, Kadeem Joseph, keeper for Speyside. Keeper for Trinity, sorry. I'm getting confused now. With that miss, they didn't have me confused, Trinities. But there's Wiley. Gets it there to what wins off. Oh, I tell oh, you. The flag is kept up. Oh, he's missed it. No! He's missed it. Chairman. Chairman Williams has missed it. Would you believe it, Brent? And don't you say, Brent, I could have scored that. I'm not done with my slows. It's oh, just, my word. It, it's, uh, it's... Colin, it's, 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 it's so... Oh, can you see it, it's, it's, You lost the words. <laughs> well, listen, it's, you, you have to put things in context. And... Uh, a lot of it, Colin, is down to confidence. It is a clear lack of confidence in, uh, in the Trinity East attacking uh, front men in particular. And it's not that they're lacking ability. It has nothing to do with ability. In fact, I would even say that uh, some of the players that we've seen at this play for Trinity College are some of the better ones we've seen in the league. Of course, uh, substitution uh, Foston, Foston for Gomes. For Gomes. And as much as we have and how many chances they've been missing, it, it is simply down to the fact that they're lacking confidence in front of goal. We got to see that again, Brent, because I thought he was he was in an offside position, position but he was right through. Well, yeah, the, the first goal, mistake, the goalie, the goalie didn't even come out. Well, Colin, if, you, if we take another look at it again, if we had to take a look at it again, uh, you have to look at the opportunity. You have to look at the fact that he never worked the goalkeeper. He went directly, he dribbled directly. The first, the ball trays, a good ball through. Look at it here, Colin. You've got to work the keeper, manipulate the ball, either go to your left or your right. The goalkeeper is in a set position. You need to get him out of that set position by manipulating the ball either to the left or the right and then passing it into the back of the net. And that, Colin, shows me that there's a, there's a distinct lack of confidence in front of the goal. And uh, unfortunately for Coach Grayson, it's the reason why they've lost their last game, and it's the reason why they're down here one 0 I'm not sure if he has any hair on his head, Brent. Because he keeps wearing a hat, so I'm not sure. But you know, this could send you not great. Could make you lose your hair. Yeah, is uh, the free kick. That's a good ball. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! Let's Set see play again. It looks. It looks to be George. Oh, it was a free kick with some power. And it was headed beautifully into the net. When you miss your chances, friends, 
you will pay. There's the free kick. If and, it's a power. In a similar vein, ball comes across. What a powerful header there by George. He makes it. Well, we talked about the vulnerability with Trinity College each percent plays. Ball comes across the box. Look at George with a thumping header into the back of the hole on the bank. Two goals to nil. You miss your chances, you play daily. Football is a cool, cool sport. And Trinity College East is finding it the hard way. Well, what a goal. It was a thumping and a beautiful free kick. Hit with some pace. And really and truly, George just put his head onto it and guided it into the back of the net. That's how you score goals, Trinity East. But you know, Brent, Space side here is George, the goal scorer. Such a gifted young man. Well, that's, that's a foul. foul. That's that's late. I tell you though, Brent, you can't discredit or or, or discount Trinity East in this game. They've created so many chances. If they if they can somehow put it together, they can get back into this game. Well, it's a feeling. He is George here with the one-two. Ooh, that's a naughty one. Takes a smiley out of that one. And you're right, you're right, Colin. Uh, they've created enough chances that suggest that even at two goals up, Space Side Eye, this game is very far from over. All it takes is one of those opportunities to go in. And uh, hopefully that would be the start of uh, things turning around for Trinity College East. But if you, if you were to look at some of the chances that they missed here this afternoon, They've but really shot themselves in the foot. I think it was Isaiah Williams. I think he missed the chance of the season. I mean, the, the goal was at his mercy and he hit it over the bar. This is so a true, just about an hour gone here. A true test of character for the, for the Blue Hawks. So can the Blue Hawks recover from two goals down now and get back into this game? They've got another half an hour in which to do it. There he comes through the keys. I'm not sure, sure. I'm not sure, Colin. Austin look offside there. I'm He's not sure about waved. that one. He was waved offside. There is the Coca-Cola score confirmation. Speyside, they lead by two goals to nil. Nicolas Sanchez in the 45th minute and Adriel George in the 58th. So just some latest scores, Brent. East McGrapo, they're leading two goals to nil at halftime against St. Benedict's. Naparima, they're leading one nil against Pleasantville. QRC, they're done by one goal against San Juan North. And St. Anthony's, they lead two goals in against Trinity Mocha. So, some familiar score lines, so one would expect uh, some of those score lines uh, we would have predicted. Of course, uh, Sawa North very much getting their game together against QRC. We talked a lot about Sawa North, the disappointing start they would have had so far. No one is doubting their ability. This is Foster. It's got to be. Yet another one goes up again. The cross coming from Foster with some power and uh, getting in there was Wiley. It seemed to be Wiley and Isaiah Williams couldn't get there. They just needed to get the, the, the laces onto it. I tell you. Oh, Topping kicks the ball. Oh, Looks that like ball is not going to come back. Looks like it's gone into the, into the golf course. She's on the Not other sure. side of the of this uh, housing complex. Of course, it uh, looks like Thomas with the injury. He's been a stalwart at the back there for Speyside High. And with 63 minutes gone so far, Colin, uh, you would have to wonder. Uh, of course, uh, the ball is over there in the housing project. Some uh, young. Young man over there is uh, going to become an instant footballer in one of those houses. He has a present of a ball. Yep, I suppose so. I do. I'm not sure what is the deal. I was about to say, 
Colin, uh, with Coach Grayson now, you would have to think that he is ha he's going to have to go for it. He's going to have to maybe put in uh, an extra attack in play. And uh, he, he is obviously going to have to think with things uh, tactically and try to, of course, put more numbers uh, up front because uh, he's tried it, of course, Coach Grayson in our shot here. He's tried it with Wiley. He's tried it with Williams. He's tried it with Gomes. He's now brought Forston in the mix. Uh, does he go for a, another striker? Maybe go to a front? Well, you have to wait and see, but um, that's the dude. He's got to turn it around. Of course, we talked about him, Brent, uh, playing for the, he played for the national youth team in 74. In fact, he represented the Trinidad and Tobago senior national team from 1975 to 1982. So he knows all about it. He's a gifted midfielder, Michael Grayson. But he needs, a, he needs somebody in his Trinity East team to gift him some goals. Oh, the ball went over the head of Williams. We understand Kurt McDonald is okay. He, in fact, was substituted. Brent that first half when he had that knee injury but uh, he was substituted well but, but we understand that it's okay yeah what we were looking at the the impact and uh, it looked look more like a, an impact another twist or pull and normally the twist and the pull more times is uh the more significant injury than the impact but we're happy to hear that uh, young kern is uh, fine and uh, hopefully he'll be a feature in the next match let's hope so here's foston being pushed in the back takes the free kick quickly but it's not a good, a good one yeah, so for, matter of fact the referee says he's gonna retake it so he would be happy there is young mcdonald with the you see, you see their the left knee brent he's icing it it's a good start oh i thought that ball was just going over the head of the keeper Suddenly, the, Brent, the, Brent, the pace of this game, the tempo has increased. I'm not sure why, but it's certainly increased. And this Beckles get trying to get it to top it. Even the crowd has got more into the game now. This is Beckles. It's a good ball. The shot. Oh, it goes wide. He turned nicely, had the shot. But uh, unfortunately, it went just wide. Confidence of James and George in the middle of the park. Backed, of course, by Beckles. That's someone slid in there. James there just turns. It's, a, it's not on target, but it's a good idea. It was a good idea. You could see what he was trying to do. The execution just wasn't what he intended. Foul on George. Of course, George scoring the second goal for Speyside. Really a good goal. A bullet of a header. Goalie had no chance. Thomas, the skipper with the free kick. Jonathan Thomas. Oh, he's going for goal. Tell you what. <laughs> he, su he surprised me. I think he would have surprised, he surprised the keeper as well. I was thinking he would have gone from goal from 40 yards out. But he went for it. And the keeper got a touch there. Maybe just as well. But we talked about the win leading up to this game. We can see, of course, all our sponsors' banners flittering in the wind. And despite it being a long way out with the push from the breeze, the goalkeeper is look troubled. Here's a good corner as well, the keeper as well. Keeper does well. Good touch. I tell you what, their That's free kicks very good and their touch. corners have been very, very good. This time they've gone for a short corner and they've messed it up. But George, he gets possession. Sense looked like more of a shot. He apologizes. You could see him raising his hand. But it looked more like a shot than a cross. He should have got it across. There seems to be a little bit more urgency in the players. You rightfully pointed out, Colin. I think, Brent, the crowd has a lot to do with it. Yes, the, the crowd, crowd has got it. more involved. I'm hearing a lot of the crowd now getting into this game. 
and of course everybody in the crowd is shouting advice they know it all <laughs> Some of the very vocal yeah. supporters. Oh, yeah. They, they, they are the ones that are shouting advice. They all they all coaches, Ebron. That's the thing. I thought, I thought they were shouting at you first. Me? Ben, come on. I wondered what you did. <laughs> Trinity has uh, made another substitution. Wiley foul. Oh no, they, it's gone against Wiley. The substitution there. Ashing coming in for Windsor. Uh, down there getting treatment. Let's see. Not sure. Is it George? The goal score it is. Here's some of the crowd looking on. This is not as vocal as the ones we saw before, Brent. They're taking in the game. You would have to think, uh, Colin, that uh, they're probably a bit shell shocked. And here's a look at, uh, of course, uh, the header by George. It's a good ball. A right? look at that bullet of a free kick, isn't it? And George just ran in, met it beautifully with that head. Goalkeeper had no chance. That's a good head. So it's going to be a corner for Speyside High. You'd have to think, Colin, a third goal and it's lights out for, oh, for Trinity sure. Colleges. With just about 19 minutes left, but I, I, I can't see them coming back in the game. They've missed so many chances. And the thing is, they're a good playing team. They just can't put the ball in the back of the net. And I'm sure, Brent, if you talk to the coach and the assistant coach and the technical staff, they will tell you that they probably practice this more, do more of the scoring in a, in a practice session than these against. But you know, match day is different to when you're practicing. It's a good ball from James. Being as well. Samuel, Samuel, still Samuel. That's good skill. That's good skill. Not a good cross. There's the bench of Trinity East, the technical staff. Of course, former goalkeeper Trevor Nottingham, the goalkeeping coach. Former teammate of mine, see. No, he mentioned if uh, while he scores, he's going to get him a new boots, but uh, he still owes me a, a Malta Carib. Oh, from many years ago. I wish you told me that. I would have reminded him. <laughs> but he looks, he looks, he looks such a frustrated figure. Looks, it must be really frustrating for the technical staff because you're outside of them not scoring, Brent. They're not a bad running team. They knock the ball nicely. They, they, the approach work is good. They just don't get the ball in the net. That's a good ball. Isaiah Williams. Too close to the keeper. He's done well. He's a coach of Speyside. Was Kerry Lynch. 
he must be he's very happy oh over the moon Colin he's uh, he's lost They've his first two games five and seven and uh, now he finds himself almost on a three game uh, winning streak well yeah, three the games they've not lost in three games the thing is he's dodged a bullet here so far you must know that but I think I think they also deserve their luck, Colin, because they have been brave in some patches of the game where they've possessed the ball. They've shown a bit of quality with the likes of George, uh, of course, James in particular coming out of the middle of the park, and they've looked very organised. Yeah, I don't want to be misunderstood at all. I think they've played very well indeed, Speyside. They've played very well, but uh, they've Trinities have created some really wonderful chances and haven't been able to score. The game is becoming a bit stretched now with uh, fatigue obviously playing a factor. This could be dangerous for Trinity Colleges. Of course, there was uh, Topin trying to, or George, sorry, trying to make his way through. Good defending. So we're coming up to the final quarter of this game. And I have to think if Trinity East have to get something out of it, they need to get on the score sheet in the next five minutes. Or else it's going to really be lights out for them. This is good work. Faustin trying to get the better of Faustin getting the better of Dalrymple does well. Faustin on the go, making their that's their a good ball. Oh, I tell you, the man who has come on as a substitute, Ashing, fumbled. He just he just couldn't control it. So we've been playing for 75 minutes now. The Coca-Cola score confirmation. It's Speyside High. They lead Trinity East by two goals to nil. The goal scored in the 45th minute by Sanchez and in the 58th by Adriel George. Time running out here on Trinity East. That's a good ball from James. Looking for topping. Just hit a little too far. <laughs> Wasn't sure if Hayes was going to come there, Carl. Actually, George was the one who had played that ball through. Just Good skill. Him. But here's Frosted! Oh, Frosted! That's a good save! That's a good save! Excellent save by Joseph. But Frosted, well, since he's come on, he's been very, very lively and he's created some problems for the space defenders. But what he has been is positive in his approach and play. He gets there before the defender and just able to get his toe on it. And even with the follow-up, Colin Thomas does really well. Has to be do now or never for Trinity Colleges. That's a foul. Silly foul, so it's going to be a free kick for Trinity East. I'm happy with the kick. Of course, here, yeah. defender Smiley has uh, been impeded there in his progress. Needs to be a quality delivery into the box, Colin. That's the first. That's what you're going to look for. I think he's going to go for goal. It's quite a far way out, and uh, the angle doesn't favor. But I guess they tried it from right in front of the goal, and it didn't work, so why not? <laughs> the shot comes. No, not That's a bad effort. Good strike. Not a bad effort from Jeremiah Williams. <laughs> and, and we've seen now goalkeeper Joseph Brent has done some good work for Spearside. He's made two very good saves. This is a good corner. Williams is there, but away comes James, gets it to Samuel, Samuel, still Samuel, that's, Foul. that's good work, that's excellent work by Samuel up front, that's a good strike there by Williams, 
brings the best out of uh, goalkeeper Joseph. So what a target. And a similar opportunity from, from a lot closer in. It's Giovanni Thomas, his effort, and uh, again, a little bit out. It was you know, just too far out for, for, for that type of freaking bread. He was trying to curl it into the top corner. I was, I would think he was coming up to 25, 30 meters out. So it never troubled goalkeeper Hayes. There's Beckles and was in the shot before. It had a good game, Beckles, for Space Side. Two for Trinities. This is Mahabir with the throw. It's a force. It goes to Wiley. Oh, he's a little slow there. <laughs> I think he saw the money train coming towards him. Yes. <laughs> Quickly got himself out of the way of that one. Of course, that was Jonathan Thomas, skipper for Space Side. He's out of the Oh, boy, oh, boy. Ashing, what was he doing? Brent, he needed just to sprint in and get that ball. He seemed to, he seemed to have just waited and lost the opportunity. But the ball was coming across the face. Another poor kick, but it goes to Beckles. Topping. Back to Giovanni Thomas. This is Samuel. Samuel. Oh, he does well. He's being able to shield it. Turns with it beautifully. He had James to, to pass the opted to go on his own and he's won a corner. You can see the frustration on the faces of the Trinity College East players. Long throw in the box here, Colin by Mahavia. Flicked on by Williamson. <laughs> Tell you my word. He just needed any type of touch. He never attacked the ball, did he? Here's Trinity he's trying to make something here. Mahavia, the skipper. Sends a nice ball looking for Wiley. Carrington is there. Eventually, Dalrymple sent it downfield. Sanchez does well, but he was in an offside position. It's going to be a free kick. Sealy gets it out there wide to Ashing. He's good defending. Good defending, of course, by Thomas. Sends it to Toppin. That's a good ball. Sanchez! Lovely ball by Toppin into Sanchez Brent. He rounded the keeper, but he unfortunately he was running out of space. Keeper did well. I think the keeper got a hand to it. So he's got a free, he's got a corner. Well, the ball is eventually sliding into the path of Sanchez. Oh, look at Haynes. Makes himself big, stays up and makes the save. It's a good save. There's well. But we say they have a, they have a corner. Away! Again, another set play. Still, they're not able to get it away. Ashing, trying to make a quick counter here. Well defended. Excellent defending. He's, he has that had a quite tussle of a game, Thomas. Oh, he has. So offside. Top in is offside. We talked a lot about uh, the attacking threat of Space Side High, but that man, Captain Thomas, has been he everything. Well. He single handedly held them together defensively. Oh, yeah. He's been very good. Of course, you've got Jonathan Thomas and you've got Giovanni Thomas. Giovanni's at left back. And uh, Jonathan, of course, the skipper in the heart of the defense. Here is the free kick. Straight to the keeper. Almost again. The 
this is why he, you know he excites me right now. He's looking to take on Thomas. Goes he fast. Thomas that's has the shot. It's a corner. Takes a deflection. Takes a lot to excite you, Colin. Well, he did. Well, yeah, but while he does. While he does. <laughs> I like the little player. Such excitement when he gets the ball. He takes the ball. Look how he leaves uh, Thomas for dead here. Look at that. Leaves him in his tracks. <laughs> Why <Wiley. laughs> did he just stood there and looked at, at Wiley. Such a good 1v1 player. Young Wiley. Oh, look at that for skill. Right foot this time. Not a bad Finish! Pass. Nobody got the head on him. This is Faustin. Faustin looks a good little player as well. Throw for space side. Just coming up to the final five minutes of this game. And you have to think that space side are holding on. Oh, to Foster. That's it. It's going to be a throw for Trinity. And from a neutral perspective, Colin, you would hope that uh, Trinity College needs to look at this for a bit of skill, Colin. Whoop! <laughs> Gets by his man. Goes past uh, Giovanni Thomas. It is a joy to watch Wiley. Well, it's a corner. It's a young Wiley. Ten on his back. This is Faustin. Oh, he's won a free kick. George couldn't understand how Faustin won the free kick because uh, he felt that Faustin was pushing him. Uh, interesting one, a double substitution. <laughs> Looks like Samuel is one of the players of. He's had a very good afternoon, Samuel. Dangerous. Go all in. Thomas again with the interception. Definitely a candidate for man in the match, Colin. I don't know about you. I know you normally overrule me. Me? I'm trying my best not to. Here's another nice looking ball. Oh, good save. Not a bad effort from Isaiah Williams. But the keepers saved that as well. When they finally got it on target, Brent. Just, just to have the there. Yeah. yeah, just to have the It's a long way out. And uh, of course, with no power, made it very easy for Joseph. Look, look, the Brent Trinity East. They've got another. They've got another player on, but he's in white. He might be. He may have a better chance of putting the ball into the back of the net. I know they're known as the Blue Hawks. I'm not sure if they're known as the White Dogs. <laughs> well, I think he's, the dog is making his way off the field. He's not in the camera shot. Here is George. Still George. Oh, Good tackle. Good tackle. No, Good tackle. Good tackle. Good tackle. Two players are down. It seems to be Seely, Seely and George, but um, Seely both are both are sitting up now. In fact, Seely is getting up, so that's a good sign. George is also getting up, so it's that's good. Both players are up. 
So confirmation of the substitution, more for Samuel. And of course, Final minute of normal time. And this minute chance. Oh, it's good to be a Jamal Ashing has put the ball in the, mat the back of the net to make it two to one, but we are running out of time. We are in the final 30 seconds of this game. But well, it was a ball into the box by Mahabia, guided into the park by Williams, and here comes Ashing's hesitation by Joseph. We bounce off of it, puts it into the back of the hole on your back. Look at that here, collision still. Not the cleanest of touches, but Ashton gets it into the back of the net. Game on. Certainly game on. This is Wiley. All of a sudden, this crowd, they're, they're up for it. They are up for it here. We're not sure how much time added on. We have cleared the 90 minutes. This game has the tempo has certainly increased even more. Sanchez does well. Here's a good ball to George. That's a, good that's a great tackle, but the referee feels that uh, it was unfair. Maybe uh, coming in, Brent with the peg showing. Not sure if so Marvin Foss in there, no, or she. Well, this is more tumbling down. Baird wins it. Allen does well. So far, fouled by James. So we, we're in the second minute of the four minutes of added on time. Messed up that free kick. There's the coach. He's going crazy. Lynch, Coach Lynch. They were, they were comfortable all the time, but Brent. He's going crazy on the side of the field. Shouting out instructions to his team. If you want a free kick. Adriel George Adriel George is the man of the match that's as far as I go I'm not sure if Brent, what if Brent Sancho is going to agree with me. But I, I, I think Adriel George has worked so hard for his team, scored a beauty of a second goal. Here comes Toppin. So we're in the final minute now. So just 30 seconds here, but 
the ball is in the spear side attack or, um, so they would need to keep it down in the Trinity East defensive area well it's now or never it is now or never for Trinity College East talking about just seconds left Side fighting for all they're worth. This is Ben Sanchez, and that's it. Space, I have done it. Space, I went, they have held on to win here by two goals to one. It's nothing short of uh, what they deserve here this afternoon. The boys from Tobago making the long trek here down to Trinity College East and coming away with a very unlikely victory. Brent, we need to apologize. The, the guy in red is not Kerry Lynch. His, he is Kervan George. The, the coach of Speyside, Kerry Lynch, did not, did not come out today. So that gentleman in red, who's been going crazy on the side of the field, is Kervan George. Yes, Kervan George is actually a... Uh, He's also a youth That's coach. He's also a youth coach at uh, Central FC. Which is he? Yes, Kovan George. You didn't know that all the time. Yes, I did. Of course, I did, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> well, two goals to one, space side here, coming away victorious. It's really an excellent result for them. As particularly when you look at the amount of chances that uh, Trinity College East was able to create, and despite the number of chances, Speyside High School came out victorious. So the Coca-Cola full-time score here at the Trinity College East Ground. It's Trinity College East 1, Speyside High School 2.
As the sun sets here in Trinity, Trinidad and Tobago, the final score, Speyside High 2, Trinity College East 1. Akil from Trinity College East, thank you for being here with us. But how did you feel about today's game? Again, to me, they didn't play badly, but at the end of the day, it all comes to finishing our chances, and unfortunately, we weren't good enough in front of the goal today. All right, well, at the start, you said goals for Speyside in a big way, but let's talk about the next game that we expect to see Trinity College Easton. Well, on Monday, we face Malik at home, mm -hmm. so hopefully people come out to support us, and hopefully we can get the three points on the day. All right, so definitely come out and support if you can. Gabriel from Speyside High, two goals. I mean, a bit of brilliance from Space Eye today. How you felt? I felt great seeing my side with victory coming out to go with a victory for the school, representing the school. Yeah. And I feel excellent knowing that is my team and my school. What's the next game for Space Eye High? Wednesday at Space Eye Home Ground Presentation College. Be so, so. Make Make it a date and don't be late. <laughs> I put in some extra there. All right, let's look at some of the highlights of today's game. Brent, calling over to you. Well, the highlights, Brent, uh, Space Side started with that shot. But really and truly, Trinity East were, do were dominating. They were dominated, but the first goal of the game came against the runner player. It was that man, Nicolas Sanchez, in the 45th minute. A lovely ball put through by George, wasn't it? Good ball by George. Good execution by Sanchez. In the first half with Trinity College East, missed a whole host of chances. Sanchez shows them how it's done, tucks it into the back of the hole on the bag. One goal to nil to Speyside High School, the boys from Tobago. Look at that here for a finish, tucks it around Hayes, gives him no chance whatsoever. And the ball goes into the back of the net. They had a, an opportunity to double their lead, that man topping, eventually crowded out by a host of uh, Trinity College East defenders. And then for one of the miss of the games, Williams 1v1 one one with the goalkeeper and hits it directly to goalkeeper Joseph. The second goal of the game, a good ball into the box and look at George with a bullet header to make it two goals to nil. We talked about the vulnerability of Trinity Colleges when it comes to set plays and they allow the men from Speyside to go two goals up. The young man from Charlottesville, Tobago, puts it into the back of the net, makes it two goals to nil. It was always difficult for them to come back in this game at 2 nil, but they can continue, Brent, to create chance after chance. When they, when they kicked it wide, once they were on target, the goalie was there to meet it, except for this one. Well, they finally got a lucky break. And in the 90th minute, Ashing, Pulls one back for the Blue Hawks of Trinity College. Nothing less than they deserve. They created a lot of chances throughout this game, but they just were very poor in execution. A game they will never forget. Of course, Colin, there's a whole outrage that says goals, goals win, win matches. matches. That's right. So two goals to one. Space side here winning this game. In the end, it was a little bit tight. But they held on. Let's go down to Sarala. She has with her the man of the match, Adriel George. That's right. Of a space side high, Adriel George, this belongs to you. Congratulations, man of the match. What do you think worked for you this afternoon? Well, I believe teamwork worked for us today. You know, the team really gelled well. We trained hard whole week. And I believe that we came out here for a victory. And we got what we deserve. Thanks to Mr. George and some set pieces we worked on earlier in training. It paid off for us and we got the victory we come down here for. All right, excellent, great job. Thank you so very much. Uh, joining me as well, I will have Coach Nottingham Trinity College. Coach? Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. A uh, question for you. I mean, I heard the commentator saying it, you know, not able to finish. Why do you think this was so? Well, I feel the players on the other side looking at themselves now because second game back to back we threw over. 15, 20 goals. Mm -hmm. So it coming to haunt us now. Last game I come on to haunt us this evening. But we hope we could play it behind our back because we have Malik on Monday, please God. Mm -hmm. And uh, we could put that quick behind our back and come and score some goals. Now, quick question. In putting that behind your back, how are you going to move forward? How do you think you could fix it? Well, we had to go back to the, the playing field, back mm -hmm. to the joint board mm -hmm. and continue doing our work and continue doing the finishing mm -hmm. so we could score more goals. 
Excellent. Noted. Thank you so much, Thank Coach you. Nottingham. I also have Coach George of Space Side High. Congratulations to you, Coach. Thank you, well thank you, thank you. done. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, clearly, it worked for you all today. Um, what strategy did you use that worked so very well for you? All right. We, um, we, we bounced on our players. We changed our players so far. We changed the little trick in the formation. We study um, what um, Trinity is going to come with, with their formation, and play, the, play our players to match their formation and execute that um, technical formation that we know that we're going to come with. Even at the second half, we try our best to hold that formation and understand that box, the box system that was playing. Right? And we put on our last two players, technically, to finish the game and bring the winning first and keep that game. And that's exactly what you did. Congratulations to you once Thank again. You. Thank you so very much, Coach George. Well, holding the formation is what worked for him. That's, that's what right. he said. But let's see if these teams can hold their formation on Wednesday, 2nd October. We head to Fatima Grounds, where Mukarapu, East Mukarapu is going to take on Sawa North Secondary School. And in the Jamaica football, schoolboy football, we're also going to have Camperdown versus Heidel on Tuesday 1st of October at 3 p.m. at the Alpha Institute in Kingston and also another game that we can look forward to in Jamaica schoolboy football Stess High versus Monroe College in Santa Cruz, Jamaica on Saturday, 5th of October. Sarala, it was an exciting game today. It definitely was. Uh, thank you so very much for joining us here on Sportsmax, Scene TV and CNC3. As usual, we leave you with some of the high points of today's match.